Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome to podcast number 182. Pam and I are both looking out the window. It's daytime. We, <laughs> we rarely podcast during the day, but Pam is off. It's Easter Monday. Mm-hmm. And she said, hey, can we podcast early? I'd Donna like to do said, something in the afternoon. But well. meanwhile, we've killed the whole day. <laughs> so, yeah. I swear, right, Diana? Oh, my goodness. But whatever. We had fun. What are you going to do? It's all good. How's your weekend, Pam? Good. How are your busy. holidays? Good. Very good. You know how Easter is. It's just a busy, a busy a couple of days, right? You know, between stuff at church and then cooking. and We had Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. And then Easter Sunday. Sunday. Right. right. Did right. the cut? Excuse me. Did the kids come out Saturday as well, or just no? For just Sunday? Sunday. Just Sunday. They're getting too big for that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> come no, out for two days. Yeah, they just came. And Emily is up in Cooperstown, so she wasn't here with the kids. So it was, it was the three kids. Okay. Not, without Emily, which was fine, and I think Emily missed it because you know Emily, then Facetimed us. You know, she Facetimed early in the morning. The baby had his, uh, he had this little onesie on with a hood, and it had big floppy. Fluffy is, you know, and so then um, she we were having dinner and she FaceTimed, you know, and so, I was going to say, because we're, yeah, so she, I think she missed the, you know, she missed it's the hard. traditional, you know, we had the Easter pies and all that stuff, so, but I had to save her some. Did you cook? I did, I did just a traditional, uh, I said to the kids, this is like a Sunday dinner that we would have every year when I was growing up, you know, you'd have your pasta, your your meats, your salads, you know, just a regular Sunday dinner. You know, a traditional Italian Sunday yes, dinner. Sunday, Italian Sunday <laughs> dinner. And I was funny, I said to someone last week, where was I? Where was I? And we, I was said like, you know, they always say, is it sauce or gravy? That's the whole thing. Do you call it sauce which, when you make the pasta sauce? Or is it gravy? Sauce. It's always, we call it. There are people who call it gravy. Really? You'll see. Put a comment below. Do you call it sauce or gravy? <laughs> anyway, and then it, it would also be another thing. Like, when do you eat, um, like, you'd always have salad. At least we would have salad. When do you eat the salad? Do you serve the salad with the pasta? Do you serve it afterwards? Now, in my family, when we were growing up, my grandmother's salad would be after, like really? you'd have your pasta, and, and then like you'd have the your, your whatever meats it could be a sausage, meatballs, you know, a brajol, whatever it was they were making, and then you'd have the salad. So Wait, it was interesting. What is a brajol? A bra- that. Well, a brajol is like a a thin piece of beef, and then what you like do a is brisket. I don't know if it's a brisket. I, I don't. Uh, you know, again, I don't even know what a brisket is. It's a it's thin a piece. Yeah, it's a thin piece. And maybe it's like this big. It's thin. You can pound it sometimes for tenderness if you want. But anyway, no, you put breadcrumbs, seasoned breadcrumbs, oh, no, no, no. and some okay. cheese. And everyone does it differently. And you roll it Fragile. and you tie it and you put it in the, you brown it in the garlic and oil. It's, hold on, hold on. Yeah, he's this. Okay. You brown it in the garlic and oil and then you put your sauce in there. So it cooks in the sauce. What I did this time is I did pork ribs. With the sausage, something a little different, and okay. the meatballs. Anyway, but that was fine. So, but that's what brought. And sometimes my grandmother used to put a hard-boiled egg in there, which to me I never liked hard-boiled. Wait, eggs. when you roll that, do you slice it, and it becomes like a whole spirally thing? It could, it the... could, but usually they're not that big. You know, brajol oh. could be like this, so you usually eat the whole thing. Or you could Everybody put, gets their own. Well, you cut it in half. It's not oh, a so big. Oh, so it's not thing. like a roast. Right, right. I'm thinking right. something. No, it's a little thing. It's a little thing. It's a little thing, and then you tie it. Usually, right. tie it close. No, I understand, but right. I was thinking of like when we do, let's say, like a silver tip roast. It's right. a big piece of meat. Right. Not that we roll it, but when, I'm thinking it, of tying it. And it does have twine around it. Usually, yes. those things. This yes, is, but th- this is not it's like, like a in mini that version. Size. Yeah, it's like the. It depends how big the piece. It's an individual of, portion. Right. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So, but I'll I didn't do brush. I didn't do brush all this time. I did. Um, Oh, the brajol? Brajol. Not frajol. Brajol. But I didn't do that. I did the uh, pork ribs. Right. So it was a regular traditional, you know, what would so be a Sunday like dinner. I had Sunday fresh ricotta di- with it and <clears throat> stuff so, like that. So my next question was going to be, is there something traditional that people eat on Easter Sunday? Well, I let people do lamb on Easter Sunday. Hmm. It's popular to eat lamb. We are not a lamb family. My mother never made lamb. So I didn't grow up on lamb, yeah. but you know, traditionally, or sometimes they'll do um, a, a spiral ham. They'll have, you know, the traditional Italian thing too is to have the pasta, and then have another piece of meat afterwards, whether it's a roast or, or it's um, uh, a spiral ham or something like that. Okay. But we didn't do that. Okay. I mean, we were we were 
five people. How much food can you eat? No, I mean, it sounds like you made it very festive. I'm yeah, not going to lie, nice. Pam brought in homemade focaccia and we ate it yes, right I before did. the podcast, which I is did very make, good. I made focaccia and I made the, with the sourdough, I finally did something with the sourdough. I made crackers, three different kinds. I sampled them. They were all very and good. They were good, right? Yes. They were good. Everything? <laughs> Asiago and cheddar. Cheddar. They were good. Do I have a favorite? All three. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take any of the three. Any of them. Right? I know. It's really not hard to make it all. I have to try. You definitely. It's very easy. So now was that a recipe from Becca? Or was that, that... No, that was a recipe from three different places, actually. Oh. Three different places. Send me the links. I will. I will And if you want the links, leave a comment <laughs> below, and we'll make sure I'll include it in the show notes. Exactly. I, I think I, I have to apologize. Why? I don't think I did the mm -hmm. show notes last week. Sorry. Yeah. Michigan. Last week was Sophie. a crazy week. It was yeah. a crazy week. I think we're lucky that we even got a podcast mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But I will include them. I have to go back. Maybe I'll do double editing. Yeah. I'll edit this. Let's, and Let's get know. this one done and then you worry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was my weekend, really. How okay. about your weekend, Dinah? What did you do? My weekend was great. We went to go visit Sophie. Went to Michigan. It's like, <clears throat> she's like, Mom, can you bring Bear? She wanted me to do this on my own. And I was hesitant mm. and I didn't know why, but something was just like, I don't know if I, with it. I don't know if I can handle it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My you, inner right. heart says, absolutely, of course I'll come. But then as I started to digest and mull it over, I'm thinking, I don't know. I've never traveled with a dog before, yeah. except for when we brought him home and he was this tiny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't know if I can handle it. So... I found a weekend that we can go with my husband, and it was great because, you know, you get to this point where she's graduating yeah, in a month. This is going to be the last time, time. Yeah, we're yeah. going to visit our child in a college. It's our fourth. Like, this chapter is closing. It's kind of weird. Mm. Um, so we made it happen. And good thing my husband came because there is no way <laughs> I could have traveled alone. But we traveled with him. I think she really wanted to see Bear, not necessarily me and my husband, but that's okay. <laughs> you were the conduits that brought Bear. <laughs> we'll let it slide. And it was just a fun weekend. It was nice to um, connect with all the girls just before the, their mm -hmm. lives are about to change. Exactly. They're done with it's school and they go into the working world, right? Asking them, yeah, what their plans were. And, you know, they've all come a long way. I started to cry because I'm really very envious of their friendship. They have a beautiful friendship. They have a, um, their uh, friends group, you know, girls from mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. And they're so respectful of one another. Mm. They get along beautifully. Are they all meet at college? Yes. They all met at college. That's unusual. It, I mean, just adorable. All Good. of them. Special. Yeah. I feel like they're going to be friends for Good. life. Well, that, that happens sometimes, you know. That I does hope so. happen. You always hear those stories. So it was funny because as I was saying that, they were sharing a story that while they were living in the house, a group of seven women knocked on their door and they were up for a 30 year or something like that reunion. Oh, and, they used to and that was the house. house. Oh, they, maybe <laughs> so the house has good vibes. They did a walk through the house. Oh, that's Nothing's cute. changed. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, sure I not. think they need to update. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. No. The house had so many issues. Yeah. Like while they were there, I think they had... The stove replaced, yeah, yeah. you know, the dishwasher. Yes. There's always something going yeah, especially on. Especially in those I think houses, in, those college yeah. houses. Yeah. yeah. But it was a wonderful weekend. Good. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yes. So you had a good weekend. I also went to go visit. Big shout out oh, to yeah. Aviva. Right, so it's right. funny. Um, Tell them Aviva from Woolly & Co. Uh, I think in I, Michigan? In Michigan, yeah. yes. She's not in, I should Google the address because I just put it in Uber. Um, you're going to look it up for me? What do you want me to look up? Woolly and Co. Yes, yeah, I was going to do. Thank yeah. you. Um, so I think when Sophie first got in, I might have messaged Aviva four years ago, and I said, "Oh, my daughter got into Michigan. I'd I'd love to come and visit your shop." West she was Bloomfield. Off West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield Township. Okay. So I'd never been, and I had been to Spun, which is really in walking distance from. It's in Ann Arbor, and I never knew where West Bloomfield was. But Aviva from the get-go was always very gracious. Oh, come over. I would love to meet you. It would be so fun. And it's funny how four years have gone by. I've actually never met her in person. 
Right. And what was crazy is I gave her a big hug and we were talking and it felt like we were friends for it's so like long. you've known each other for a long time, right? <laughs> it was crazy. But I messaged her now and I said, you know, I'm coming up. I know graduation weekend. I wouldn't be able to. And her yeah, son's graduating. Too busy. Right. Is he in Michigan? Uh, no, I don't think so. He's mm -hmm. in a different, different school. Mm -hmm. But so we were both going to be busy with graduation. So I said, can I come up? Will I be disturbing you? I never like to go unannounced course, to another course, yard chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, she said, come over. And she was hosting her knit class. And, you know, the ladies were lovely. And she has her whole help session, almost like reminiscent of what you do at knit night. Right, right, right. She had like eight or ten women at the table. They're all getting help on different projects. And it's just love. It's a circle of nice. fiber friends. It's right. beautiful. Well, that's what you want. Yeah. She does what... that daily. It's great. Well, that's what the drawer is. You know, I was saying to Diana, I think that at least 50, well, I know in my case, 50% at least is because they come for the community of knitting. Of course. You know, and, nice. they, they, and they just want to come and yeah. do that. Yeah. So it's really nice. And she's got a beautiful shop. Um, she it's was hard very to find gracious. those shops nowadays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were chit-chatting after everybody left. Oh, it was a lot nice. of fun. That's yeah. good. So thank you, Aviva, if you are watching this podcast. I appreciate it. And she is, gracious. I will say, she is on Instagram, Wooly and Co. W-O-O-L-L-Y-A-N-D-C-O. You know what that is? Do you know what that is a picture? What? Temperature blanket. Oh, yeah, she's doing a temperature knit along. I think I'm going to do that next she's year. She's knitting, but she's knitting it. What did what did um, Allison was crochet? It was a crochet yep. one, right? Yep. I mean, there's so many out there. Yeah, there she is. So, yep. anyway, thank you. She's a gracious host, and it was a lot of fun. Excuse me. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I have an unboxing. I turned the volume instead of the turn off. <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, so what are you knitting on? Unfortunately, nothing new. I'm finishing up my, um, oops, hold on, my vertices. I just began the, just began, I began the bind off on the, I'll do it this way, on the vertices. That's all I've gotten done, doing it in the gold. What do you mean that's all? She completed Well, no, knitting. no, I, I haven't done, you know. I think since Thursday... You were still on... I, Thursday, I had I had just started, I think. No. You were just this. finishing up the section. Right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, but this isn't hard. I mean, I did this section here and I finished That's up that. section six. I can't really open it up to show you anything because it's... Oh, there goes my needle. It's all on a... All the stitches were, were picked up either. It's a I'll DPN. It. Yeah, I'll Do get you it. need that? I was using it for my, my eye cord. Don't worry about it, Diana. I got it. Um, so I can't really open it up and show you much, but I can show you just to, um, I can show you the colors I used. And you can see you do have yarn left over, right? I mean, that's a lot on this color. This is the bronze. This well, is I wanted the, to ask you about this. Which I can never remember the name of. From Ruby and Roses. You have it in yours? Baroque. Baroque, yeah. And this color. from Most of it's suburban. Actually, your yardage is different than mine. Right. Beautiful palette. Right. What is the yardage in Ruby and Roses, do you know? Is it 400 or 437? I think it's 437. I think it's larger. But the 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 suburban is 460. Right. So you had plenty of yarn. Right. So I have a question for you. What's that? If I'm not mistaken... Stephen said color E mm -hmm. was going to be the one that was used the most. Color E, which is color E. A, Your B, gold. C, my gold. I don't know. Is that true? I beg to differ. That row, that's it was B. Simple. Well, I'm not done with this yet. But he you doesn't use elected that. to use yeah. that for your eye cord. Right. Color, yeah, color um, E. You're right. Right? E has... Yeah. Am I, I well, mistaken? Well, that's what I have the least of, is the E. But again... No, that's B. What color are you saying? I Which need to look at the did you say? B. He says... I thought he said E was the one that was going to be... Had the most yardage. Or did we say that it was most prominent? Maybe I'm mistaken. I changed it, so I can't really say that, because I did A, B... C, D. C, D, and then my E, but then for my D, 
well, for my section, was it five? No, four. My section four, I didn't do what he said, I don't believe. He says to use D for that one, and I didn't use D. What did you use? I used C. Which is fine. Let's see. That's still not... And that that's why I have so much of this left, because this would have been my D if right. I had done what he said. Right. I mean, not that it matters. No. But I think so the I'm piece, he says, he says about 350 yards for each color. And clearly, I had 460. Right. What were you going to say? Um, I wanted to mention that if any of you... So we're doing the Vertices Unite Knit Along, and I've had a couple of people come in. They were a little, you know, worried about the stitch count. If you're knitting this at home on your own, do not worry about the stitch count. Just work the right we section had someone as was, yeah. discussed yeah. and just keep with it. Right. Like, who was it? Who was it who wrote Susan ripped it out? Susan ripped out section three. Right. Because the stitch count was off. I, I did not do, do that. Not, you uh, do not need to do that. Honestly, I don't even know at section three how off or on I was with my stitch count. But when I did section five, I was telling you that I had to go further on section five because I had more stitches when I was going across. Right. So he when says you, you'll have a hundred and what a four right. whatever. I it was. had more stitches. Like and I ended up I did five more rows. Right. So which meant you had more stitches in your final section. Right. But it all works out. You just Yeah, exactly. And I did that. Instead of doing it thirty six times, I think I did it like whatever it was. I had a hundred. I just did it until stitches. I yeah. I just did it until I hit the end. Right. Exactly. Right. So what I'm trying to say is if you're knitting this at home, do not get hung up with the amount of repeats that Stephen suggests for the pattern. Yeah. I think it, let's call it an earmark. It's an approximate. You might have less. If you made a mistake, you might have more. Well, if you made a mistake. He says in his video but that you, you don't can, need to yeah. rip back. Yeah. He says you can knit two together. You can get rid of the stitches or add a stitch if you need to. I mean, I guess that would have been a choice, too. Maybe at some point I, I could have gotten rid of a stitch so that I would bring it down to right. a different stitch count. But it doesn't make a difference. You, you couldn't tell on this. But no. anyway, this is just a compilation right it's here. I gorgeous. can't open it up any more than that. It so hopefully beautiful. by next week it will be done. I have a feeling you'll be done. Yeah. But like Diner, well, Diner and I were just discussing, it's cast on time. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I've cast on itis <laughs> like nobody's business. But that's that's just part of it. Yep. That's so anyway, part. that's my one of my whips. My other whip is my... We'll talk about that in a minute. Go ahead, Diana. No, I was going to say I forgot to talk about what I'm wearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's me. I jumped into what you're mm-hmm. knitting. I'm wearing the Summer Canoes, and I will put that in the show um, down below since I'm going to edit. This is a design by Elsbeth Judith. I was lucky enough to meet her when I was away. Mm-hmm. And what I didn't share is that I was really fangirling her every time she was wearing something new. I was like, Oh my God, what is she wearing? I'm obsessed with her top. Um, but this is her sweater. I love it. I knit it in Lena Lena, by Santa Scarn. I opted to knit it single strand. The pattern called for this yarn plus a mohair, but for a summer top, I didn't want the mohair. Um, I think when, I know when I knit my next one, I'm going to knit it again, single, but I might do a tighter knit, not try to um, get gauge. I'm going to knit it to the gauge that I want, although I do love everything about the fit on this. It's a looser fit. It's a looser fit. But you can tighten it up. I wouldn't mind if it, right, my next one was a little tighter. It would look a little different, probably Mm -hmm. a more closed neckline, uh, but I do love it. Yeah, I like it worth knitting again mm-hmm. so this is called summer canoose and it translates translates to a summer hug like <laughs> a summer hug okay. it's hugging you in the yes. summer okay so i wanted to get that out of the way i am still slowly i didn't get much knitting done while i was away mm-hmm. uh this is my musselberg it's designed by Isolde Teague. And again, I'll put that down below. Uh, I'm doing it with two colors, one spin cycle. And this yarn here is the Paprika Billow, uh, which was once Shibui. And 
no longer. So I'm not quite at the halfway mark, but I am slowly moving along. Mm -hmm. And okay. this is pretty much tonal. It's not a color but that's popping out. It'll be nice so when, when she it's cuffs cohesive. it up, she'll yeah. cu cuff it up it'll, if, she, if she does it that way. This is how it'll right. look Very cuffed pretty. up. Yeah, yep. it's nice. pretty. It nice. works. Good. So that's that. And then I also have my Vertices Unite. Uh, this is what I took to Aviva. She said, bring knitting. Oh, she <laughs> so did say that, yeah. <laughs> of course I brought knitting. Um, I was able to knit a little bit there and on the way there and on the way back. I have just finished my section, I guess, six. That's a whole section. That's a yes, whole, that's a whole, that's a whole shawl. Oh, yes. You got more knitting done than I did. <laughs> no, on, I just did this. You were on this one I saw you. I knit on the plane. Well, I knitted right, in the Uber right, there. Right. On the Uber, I only brought this with me. That's a lot of knitting. That's all I brought. Yeah. So I you have. Didn't bring your hat with you. It was in my bag, oh, but, but I you didn't, didn't work on it. No, I mm. didn't really knit on the plane on the way there. Mm -hmm. It was a short flight. Yeah. On the way back, Bear was exhausted. So you. Were able I was to able knit. to knit. Yeah. Um, but let me show it to you. Yeah. Thank Are you. Are you on a needle? There is a needle on there, but that's okay. one tip. That's section one and two where Pam is. This, this here, oh yeah, that is one and two. Yeah, this here is section three. Um, Come this down. one here, the stripe section is section. No, this is section four up mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. This is section five, and, and section six. And what color are you going to do the edging? That's the big question. <laughs> Initially, I did think I was going to edge it in this color, but I think that might be a little bit too strong. So I think I'm going to edge it in this colorway. I like that colorway. Yeah. This is called um, Common Ground. Common Ground, right. The pattern actually calls for this. I wouldn't do that. This is the Baroque. You were thinking of the other color. I was thinking Korea. of this, but I think it's just, it's too much of a, it's too, too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this will give you a pop. But it'll be more neutral. More neutral, yeah. yeah. And I think I'll I like, like that. it better. I think it's great. So that's it. There you go. So you got that done quickly, Dinah. Yes, you I really did, not did. Get anywhere with my pressed flowers. It was too much to take. Well, you we, can't we take pack that. Light. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard to take. With and you. I learned that when I went to Europe, I packed all my projects, and <laughs> I really rarely knit. So oh. there but was it always no makes point. us feel better when you pack them. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? That's bulky to yeah. bring that whole cardigan. I agree. I agree. Here, so this. well, hold on. Give me that a minute. And of course, Dinah took it in her knit love bag. Yes. That they're coming in this week, aren't they? I believe they are. Uh, you know, I'm. I don't want to jinx it. No, they're not coming in this week. <laughs> I did say. Let's say they're not coming in, and then they will. Come I in. should say what I should say is that I told everyone that I was going to close the pre-order. Yeah. Jan. Uh, Jan. End March, of March. Yeah. End of March. Yeah, that's yesterday. However, I went open. heavy and ordered everything ahead of time, mm. and which means instead of doing the pre-order now they're actually going to be coming in now of course so you went, I, yeah so you tried to make it i yeah, tried to yeah. save on time and yeah. i knew everybody would be excited i think everyone's going to be excited to get them mm -hmm. so my whole vertices unite is in here as, good. as you can see yeah. there's still room there's still room yeah. Yeah. yeah uh great bag super well, excited you could put a sweater in there for sure yeah. yeah yeah you'll see a few up here i think i still have more of the Whip It, which is the neon yellow, mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two, they look like they're available, but they're actually spoken for. Uh, we're waiting for a second bag. I'm pretty much sold out. What do you mean I think a second the, bag? What do you mean? Meanwhile, like meaning if someone ordered the pink knit pearl, the black with the pearl, mm -hmm. it's knit on the other side. Mm -hmm. They might have ordered another bag that we're waiting for it to come in. Okay, Yarn gotcha, stop, gotcha, or gotcha. Another, right, right, right. Another saying. So they're out there for display. You can still order them. The first run has been placed. I'm getting a huge delivery. I hope to be getting a huge delivery. Hopefully. We're hoping. Yes. Um, and if you order something and something is out of stock, I might call you and say, hey, do you want to wait for the next order? Or would you like to swap it out for something else if you're eager to get a bag? I'm flexible. Uh, I try to be as... Right, of course. 
Well, there are uh, some people who have, you know, orders pending because we have the yarn, but we're shipping anyone it who with ordered a bag. early right. on is getting the bag that they want. Mm -hmm. It's at this point, you know, the last few orders. You might have to wait for the next order Correct. or not. I, I may it have padded the order the enough right. that you are and lucky who remembers, enough to get quite it. Quite frankly, at this point, who the heck remembers? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. It they was were good more that... popular than I expected them to be, and I'm always, very grateful for the You can always get order. more. You of can course, I can get more. So that's you know, it's not a one and done. Yeah. So those are my what's... oh, and my my hat. My hat has gone nowhere. Um, oops, I just closed on the oh, yarn. I hope gosh. it comes out. Look at that. I just zipped it right over the yarn, Dinah. Oh, there you Be go. Be gentle. Oh, I think I'm still in there. Here, here it goes. Anyway, um, oh, the hat's not even in there. Where's the hat? You're kidding me. I swear the hat's over. Look at this. <laughs> Such a banana. Anyway, this is the hat. We were just measuring so cool. it. I maybe have, I should do another inch or so. But it's almost ready to go. And the big dilemma was what color do I put? I couldn't find anything. That okay, let's show. I just dropped the one color. Oh, I'll get it. Let's show the options and get a vote. I know what color I think you should do. Well, yeah, I can't do the one that's on the floor because no. we don't have it. Right. So this is not an option. Yeah, you're not going to show them. <laughs> anyway, so this is the hat. So you can I'll see it. Them. And these are the colors. We can either go with a blue. So let's see. I mean, there is blue It's getting in it. blown out. How come that light isn't on? Oh, hold on. Can you maybe turn it this way? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Still getting blown out, but that's like a more saturated blue. Yep. So that is an option. Yep. This colorway is called Suit. Is that what it's called? Yep. And then this is the other option. This is called Syrah. What color do you think Pam should cuff or work the lining in? Suit, Syrah. <laughs> Two <laughs> options. Leave a comment. Help Pam decide. Help me Let's decide. see if you're right. If she decides, what I decide for next to week. do? Yes, because I th have a. I feel confident that you'll be up to that colorway. Yeah, I think I will have another inch to do. It's a kind of project that once you pick it up, after you do like a round or two, you really start moving. At least I find it's like, um, it's like a card turning over, you know, <laughs> get to, and then once you get going, it's like, oh, I don't want to put I this like down. I like that analogy. <laughs> it's like, no, don't park me. So there we go. So mm. that's my other project. But soon to be, I think Dinah will, and I will soon have a bunch of other cast-ons, right, Dinah? Yes, I definitely have cast-on-itis. So what are we going to talk about next? Um, I think we should talk about this. Okay. So we're just going to re-announce that we're hosting a new knit-along. It's the Garden Cardigan. It's designed by Anka Strick. I'm just going to head over to the website to get the date of the first class. It's the 15th, 14th. Why do I think 16th? No, maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. It's a great cardigan. It's oversized, a little bit oversized. Um, and um, it is... Um, I love that detail at the back of the neck. Um, we are using, well, you could use whatever you want. What, uh, what Diana and I are using is the Rowan Felted Tweed. Yes, I have some here. I'm not going to show you the kits, but this right. is the yarn. It's Rowan Felted Tweed. Uh, we've promoted it for other projects in the past. Um, the most recent, it was popular in the artist shawl in the silk shawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Both shawls are designed by Natasha Hornby. It's a lovely yarn. It's a combination of a pack in there, isn't it? Well, that's not the, is that the blend? I can't read it. It's right here. Here it is. I see it. It's a uh, 50 wool, 25 wool pack of 25 viscose. And there you go. You can see I like the little, halo. The halo. It's a non superwash. Um, and it says the gauge is 19 stitches to four inches after blocking. And don't forget, it is a lace pattern. You know, there is that lace design going up, the, up it. So it will open up. I had um, two customers come into knitting last week who were making it. And it was funny oh, because the gauges. Be week. We'll right, see how they're doing. The gauges were totally different. Uh, totally different. Let's not exaggerate. It, they one, each achieved a different One was gauge, tighter, yeah. one was looser. Right. The one that was looser, I thought she should tighten up, but when I looked at her, I gave it some steam, and when I looked at it, 
it was the right on for the what the gauge should be. And I have to tell you, with that gauge that I'm saying is right on, it wasn't right on until I steamed it. It was still tighter. Right, but it wouldn't need to be blocked. You mean wet blocked? Yeah. It you wouldn't. Want. Did you say it would or it wouldn't? It would need. Right. To. So my point is, even when I looked at it, my this was. I'm giving you my honest reaction when I saw both gauges. I thought the one looked neater. I thought the one looked a little sloppier. Okay. And I thought maybe she should, in my mind, maybe she should go down a needle size. But oh. upon giving it a little steam and measuring them, which one? The one that I thought could be tightened up was the. Spot correct. on, spot on. And gauge. how did it steam? Like when you steam out, it kind of gives you that blocked out look. Yeah, yeah. And if it was just right on gauge, then that was the six. It would have opened up even more, and it would have been too loose. Right, right. So, so that's what it should have been. But my my point is, like I said to Diana, I probably will do a gauge, and I'll probably wet block it. I think that'll be important, right? Because you will be washing your garment, right? You don't want it to mm -mm. overly grow. And and the honest thing is that in the pattern it says. Uh, for your gauge needle, a four, five, or six U.S. needle. So she doesn't specifically say depending on how you're knitting because it has the lace in there. Right. You know. And the one gal who gauged it and it was a little tight, she's a good lace knitter. She does very well with lace knitting. Right. So she's she's re Do you think that it. will wet block? To be it probably will. And don't forget, you know, if something is longer, it loses in the width. Right. So if you widen it, it's going to lengthen, shorten in the length. So do you think her gauge was right from the gecko? Maybe? No. Grace says no. And, and she was on the largest suggested mm. needle. She was on the six. Wow. And I really w w wouldn't be comfortable telling her to go to a seven because, you know, it's a swatch. Mm -hmm. it, it was how many stitches? Like, you gauged yours on 24. They did it on, I did the multiple. They did it on 19. No. So that's just the width, you know. Mm -hmm. No, I always like to add a little bit more on so you could see. Right. Now, I have engaged it, so, you know, I haven't done it myself. So what we wanted to share is that it actually does start on April 16th, mm -hmm. so there's mm. still time. There's three three classes, April 16th, May 14th, and June 11th. Mm -hmm. um, 5.30 to 6.30, we went a little bit earlier. There are three one-hour sessions, and you can book the class or the knit. It's under the classes, but it's an, a, a knit along. Right. Uh, and I just wanted to show you, we cast on, or I should say I cast on just to this start. Is stitch. Um, this is the stitch. I should kind of maybe. You put do you want to, yeah. Do you you know what, the piece of paper, yeah, so I was just going to say, but here it is, this one. Okay. Maybe you could see. So again, it's not blocked yet. I'm still knitting it. I did, um, like Pam said, I put stitch. the number of stitches that would be divisible which is a good idea. Um, and then I will wet block it. This is only halfway through my cage. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to let you see what it kind of looks like. So it's if you've never done lace before, it's an easy this would lace. be an introduction to lace. Mm -hmm. um, what else can we tell you? We're going to teach you, you know, if you make a mistake and you don't know what row you're on, we'll be able to teach you how to read your work. There are short rows in the beginning. It's worked seamlessly from the top down. <clears throat> So if you've never done a cardigan, it's mm -hmm. one that you'd like to um, join us with. We'll talk about that. You're knitting the pattern in the round on the sleeves. Right. So it's top down, different kind of, you know, a, a lot of cardigans are being written this way. But if you've never done that and you'd like to learn, join along, incorporate a lace, uh, we'll talk about all of those things in our next knit along. So again, if you have stash yarn, I highly recommend if you're thinking about this to check the pattern and the sizing. Look for a size that you'd like to knit and check to see that whatever stash you have, uh, you have sufficient yardage. There you go. And that's it. So that is our knit along. Yep. I tell she has a tubular binder of Diana. And a crochet cast on. I should that all the things that fun things that we're going to be learning. Yep. And there you go. Okay. Next, let's start with some of the new kits that we have to share. And do this one next. Huh? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, Friday I had to run out early. I didn't get a chance. I posted. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you saw the post on Instagram, or if you follow Natasha already, you'll definitely know she dropped a new pattern just before Easter. Uh, it's called the Nila sweater. It's a beautiful top with another adventure in texture. You'll see the different panels 
along the front. She's got two options for the sleeves, a three quarter sleeve, and I'm not sure if you could see it, but there's also a cap sleeve option in there. Uh, is there another picture in there with you? Not on Let's that see. one. I'll look it up. She, the testers did a beautiful job. She launched the pattern right before the holiday, and I did post because I wanted to let you all know that she always offers a lovely discount. So I think there was a 15% discount, but I believe that ended on Sunday, Amst uh, midnight Amsterdam time. Uh, I haven't cast on yet. I picked a color. I can show it to you. Let me go get the color. And I'll show you the cap sleeve. Sure. Oh, you know why I'm not finding it? Because <laughs> I'm in um, I'm in the wrong craft, Dana. Oh. You know how Ravel is. If you go on Instagram, you'll find beautiful pictures of her wearing it. Mm -hmm. She had done it in a beautiful shade of gray. I picked this colorway. I think it's called Toffee Rose. It's, it's a pretty. knitting place um, merino linen colorway. So I think it's going to be beautiful. I'm not sure if you could see the merino li the linen tufts coming out. So there's a little bit of texture. So if that's not your vibe, uh, merino linen may not be the choice for you. There's um, some sock yarn. I think we have other. It's gorgeous. Yes, the cap sleeve. I love that cap sleeve. It's a great cap sleeve, isn't it? Stunning. Of course, her arms look nice. You know, she's. I know. Good I'm arms. not. <laughs> I may Very have shapely to extend arm, upper arms. <laughs> I may have to extend the cap. I don't know. I, have such I don't think so. I don't think Hadassah so. Hadassah arms, as they say. <laughs> that's such a great term. Anyway. Okay. So that's what you're so doing. So I'm looking forward to casting this on. So we put together a couple of kits. Right? You were talking about the kits we mm -hmm. put together? Yes. Let's start with this one. Sure. This is merino linen, light yeah. gray. Stunning. A beautiful basic. Yeah. I could just see it in that colorway, wouldn't that totally. be Totally. Uh, let's do this one next. Here, I'm going to hand that to you, Dana. This one is called Lotus, a pretty shade of light pink. That one is called Cymbidium. Yeah, Cymbidium. Different than the colorway that I'm yeah. doing, just in case you're, you know. Yep, you can see that's got This is more. like a little more pink or yep. red. Yep. Well, like that's a rose more, gold almost, right? right? That's more like a caramel toffee. Yep. Uh, let's go to this one next. Here you go, Diana. This is perfect. This is navy. I love this colorway. I know that Bridget, one of Natasha's dear friends and testers, knit a navy option and let me just see if I can find it here she is she looks stunning and I just love that her cherry blossoms are in bloom oh, and it's just the tree a perfect her looks oh, gorgeous gorgeous beautiful beautiful so she styled it different ways she's wearing it with pants here and then she has it styled with a beautiful skirt and then actually skirt and pants this first picture is still the skirt. She looks beautiful. Hold on, it's popping off. There it is. Mm. I love her smile. She looks gorgeous and I love the flowers in the background, it the trees pretty. in full bloom. This color I'm going to show you now probably resembles Natasha's color, maybe a little lighter. It's called yes. Lamb's Ear. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Next up for all you green lovers, this is Eldritch, still in the merino linen base. And we know some of you like going into a more pastel spring-like colorway. This colorway is called Frozen. That's pretty. Don't be fooled by its name. It's a light color. <laughs> uh, very pretty. Uh, we also have Aster Azure, a knitting place colorway. That's pretty. And we also have very a dark spring. gray elephant's ear. This one here is a merino four ply. So if you're not into the merino linen, this is a merino superwash wool four ply. Colorway is called Ginkgo, similar to the color that I'm wearing. Yes, we thought it was a great color to have. In Love there. that color. Yes. This is called Primrose, a very soft shade of peach. Uh, I know that it's getting washed out here, but it is a very pretty soft shade of peach. Mm, that's a pretty merino color. linen. Mm -hmm. This is Pika Pika. 
it is um, 60% superwash merino, 20% silk, and 20% rami. We have it in iced tea. Navy. And navy. So the colors aren't as saturated on these two bases right. because of the silk. So there you go. And then we did put some kits together using Sunday. From so, Santa Scorn. Yeah, Santa Scorn Sunday. When we looked at the testers' pages, and we highly recommend um, checking out Ravelry. If you look at, if you look up the pattern when you go to purchase the pattern, yeah. you'll find the number of p projects that were actually knit. I'm going to look it up right now, and I could show you where to find that if you're not sure. So I'm looking up the project Neela as if I'm going to buy it. Um, here on the project page and there's an add to cart button up here right below it you'll find projects and it says 38 if you click on those projects you'll see all the different versions of the testers and there are so many and they're knit in different colors different fibers yes mm -hmm. and now another thing that you can do to look further up top is yarn ideas and if you click on that you'll get all the different yarns that the testers have and if used. you click on the picture of the yarn it will give you the yarn details if you clicked on where it says used once used twice whatever it'll Here's bring up the project Sunday. Click on that, yeah. I'm going to click on that and then I'll find the tester who started knitting. And that's it in Sunday. It's gorgeous. So you'll clearly see wonderful stitch definition, mm -hmm. which is why we decided to yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's lovely. Mm. Gorgeous. So we put about, I mean, we, we've made about five kits in Sunday. You certainly can buy it a la carte. We should say how we sized it. We sized it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we went for size um, 45, and a 45 and a quarter finished measurement. So I think that's the fourth size, and However, I believe you can do that for, so it includes three skeins of fingering weight yarn. You can do the three-quarter sleeve up to size four, four, which is the 45 and a quarter finish bust. However, if you go for the cap sleeve, I believe you can do any of the sizes. You can, because when Diana and I looked for ourselves, and we thought we would do the 45 and required us to go into the third skein because we went into the third skein and because there's 383 or so yards in a skein if you were doing the cap sleeve that would that meant you could go through all the sizes right so where it might be different is maybe if you were doing the smaller size or the second size you might take off one of the skeins you might not need it so that you'd have to look at what size you're making she does say um it's meant to be worn with two to four inches of right. positive ease. And although I measure a 40 or a 30, almost 40 yeah. inch bust, I don't like to personally wear yeah. something perfectly fitted across my bust. Yeah, the size down from the 45 was 40, and we just felt that would be. So that, I'd yeah. rather err on a little bit looser. Right. So I, I'm going to knit the 45. Right. So if you were to use this, this, size. this has about 250 yards in a skein approximately. So we kitted them with five skeins of Sunday, which would give you 1,250 yards, which is approximately what you'd have with Equivalent the Equivalent to, to the, the fingering. Other. Right. So this was one colorway that we did. I think which this is, is like a dusty rose. Correct. Which is very pretty. So five skeins. This is the 1015. That's kit. Which is kit. Nice neutral. I think there was another color. I think there were five colors. No, whatever. Um, this is camel. Yeah, pretty. And this is another pretty color. This would make a beautiful best friend shawl from Isabel Kramer. I love <laughs> it these would. three Those colors. The colors. <laughs> and this is like a khakiish color, a khaki green. I thought I had five colors. I guess not. I don't think so. I thought I did. Well, and there were also some other colors. There's like. Um, a gray, a nice gray, there's a pure white. I could see the summer top in a great white shade. That would be a great right. basic to have. There in was the um, uh, like a cadet kind of a blue, like a rich, like an ink blue you could do. We didn't do that because we had other blues. So certainly if you're interested, you can go on the website also and buy some Sunday. I told Diana, I think I might do it on Sunday. What do you think, Diana? Should I do this? 
Here we go polling again. Well, Ready, guys? White. Help us help Pam decide. This or white? Imagine in a white top. Do it. Look at how great that matches your eyes. I do think the white would be stunning. Yeah, wouldn't the white would I be do. for a summer top? Yes. Because you could wear that with khakis and jeans. I have this desire to knit like a white top. Right. I, mm -hmm. some, I remember when you were doing this. Weren't I you? Am, didn't you want to do that in white? We were out of it. Yeah. I so might do this one and I can do it in white this time. <laughs> Maybe I should do it in white. This is a lovely color. Yes, it is. So I just want to read you the blurb okay, from Neela. Right Throw your dreams into space like a kite. Neela seamlessly combines grace and strength where the intricate lace work. Oh, I didn't realize there was lace in there. Mm -hmm. um, the lace work is balanced by the strong lines and the textured background. The result is a stunning display of stitch and shape. Definitely shape. Mm. Select cap sleeves for a summery vibe or embrace timeless charm with three quarter sleeves. Regardless of your choice, Neela promises to be a, de a delightful addition to your hand knit sweater collection. Mm. Amen. I like it. I like that too. I like that. Definitely. So thank you, Natasha. Congratulations. There you go. You've struck again. So those are our Neela kits. Yes. That are on the website. Next, you want to have some fun? Who's ready for stripe a <laughs> <laughs> Stephen has done it again. Of course. Um, it's Interest funny. Go ahead. It's Interesting because it's kind of like a vertices vibe, but with stripes. Well, on his YouTube video, I didn't watch it. That's what this is based off of. Get out! It's based off of Vertices Unite, and he Nailed says it. he likes that modular, the pickup. It's fun, and how. We, but he wanted to do it with stripes, and how we did it, as you can see, he did some narrow stripes. He did three garter ridge stripes. Um, they're wider stripes. Right. And he shows where he shows where it's none of what's photographed here is the beginning of the shawl. The beginning of the shawl must be on this side somewhere. Because he starts with a smaller section as the first part of the shawl. So through unlike vertices, it is only three colors. Oh, so if you want to delve into a modular knitting shawl. Right. Yet not make such a great commit big commitment. Right. Three skeins. Right. I would it's recommend definitely and I would recommend if you're interested in doing watch doing it, watch his YouTube video. It's about seven minutes, seven and a half minutes. I love his videos. The I didn't other get a chance thing, to watch. I watched it. it while I was putting my makeup on today. Uh, the other thing he says is, and you can see it's not as big as his vertices, right? But what he did do, he did a second one, the one I was showing you that was black, gray, and blue. Mm -hmm. He moved up on the needle size. So it was larger? He said you could go one or two needle size larger. Oh. And it, that one is almost as big as our vertices. Really? And um, he got a larger shawl. So it's very, I mean, you very have a lot of leeway with very the Very interesting. Right? Yeah, and he designed this for um, a pop-up shop in um, Europe, which he was at just recently. La Bien Me. Correct. And uh, it's three colors. He says a pop, throw a pop in there. Um, and, and you know, you can, it doesn't have to. I mean, you should make what you're going to wear and what you're going to like. Sorry, Obviously, Pam. That green color in there, he calls it, the color is called tennis ball. I do want to, I don't know if you could see it, there's a two-color eye cord. Yes, so there is a two color. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I thought that would that. be fun to yeah. share with you. Yeah. So even if that. you have knit the vertices, I know a lot of the women they want or to do people another one. are thinking about doing a second one. So before you dive into a second vertices, you may want to hop onto and some women, stripe and metry. Some women in the vertices They've already started. Group were were talking about this. They were I talking about this at, this weekend about doing stripe yeah. stripe. Up. How do you say it's it? Stripometry. Stripometry. And um, so that would be, again, um, not quite as much yarn. I mean, you may have something and in your yeah, stash. stash time. Maybe you need one more color to make it work. Maybe you need the pop. Exactly. Maybe you need a mate. Yep. So we have done about, tw I think we did about 12 kits. So we were having fun. I mean, you yeah, could, this is endless. You could, <laughs> you know, putting his things together is so that much would be fun. fun. The new yarn would be fun. Yarn. That would be fun. We have to show you that. Should you show them now? Let's show them our kits first. Okay. Oh, okay. the kits are here. Yep. Okay. So. I like this one. I'll let you hold that one. Um, it has Heron's Wing is this color. I should know these colors. Fragrant. And then this great little um, 
urbane. How cute Beautiful. is that? Beautiful. Love that one. And you can see the colors in the speckle, how it picks up those colors. So you'll see that we paid great attention in trying to make these very cohesive for you all. This one here is Frost. Love this one. La Boheme and Clean Slate. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's stunning. I would knit that one. And I was blue, stunning. but I would knit that one. This is um, Flutter, Icing, and it's electric. Look at that, guys. Beautiful. Um, this one is bronze. This is the color that's in my vertices now. Gold and heavy. It's Oslo. Oslo. Look at that. That's great. Love that one. Okay, I'm Diana, gonna, it's your turn. I'm going to show you this one. Neon <laughs> Lime. I love this one. <laughs> um, Aurora Australia. Australia? Australia's, yeah. And I think it's uh, Leopard. Ah, that's gorgeous. That's insane. That is gorgeous. That's going to be a good kit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I'll let you do this one. Mm -hmm. This one is Spearmint, Starstruck, and Wisteria Lane. Look at that Starstruck, how it's got all those colors in it. You see? The two colors. That's very pretty. It's soft. Very, very soft. Very right? spring It doesn't vibes. have to be like a tennis ball color. No. Right? Uh, this one is Sinfully Decadent. I love this one. Uh, Frontier. Was saying, you were saying you like this one. Love right? this one. Frontier <laughs> Stars. Love it. I'm getting into Pam's colorway. <laughs> she is. Dusty she pink. Is. That's gorgeous. Come on. That is, is so good. That reminds me somewhat of my vertices, except it doesn't have that dark brown in it. This is Venti Dragon, Paper, and Joshua Tree. Again, look at that, guys. Ooh, fun. Oh, it's, oh, I love this one, too. <laughs> Which one? This one. I know. <laughs> this one is... Hold on. I got this Here. in my lap. Let me take these. Dubrovnik, Fire Opal, and Elizabeth Taylor. That is great. That is a great one. This is a great one. Stunning. Yeah. I think they're all really good. I don't... Honestly, I don't really think I have a favorite. I yeah. think they're all too good. Go ahead. This one here... I'm so all over this kit, too. <laughs> the neon. I'm not surprised. Flora Rose, Farmhouse White, and Dirty Panther. Woo! This one is Happy Accident, Joy, and Eggplant. And that Joy is just such a subtle. She's so good, Diane, with her colors. Per amazing. Did you do this one? No. This mm -hmm. is another good one. Mm -hmm. Again, Diane. Demure. Ugh. Pop Star. And Velvet Magenta. Lovely. They're all very cohesive. If you feel like there's a colorway that we didn't hit and you're interested in seeing one, we can always help you out. If you have a lone skein at home or two that you feel like could work together but you need a third, feel free to email me a picture and I'll be happy to try and help you out. Again, the name of the shawl is called Stripometry. It's designed by Stephen West. It's available on Ravelry. David. And it was initially designed for the pop-up shop in Paris for La Biennale. Correct. So if you want their kits, you could do I'm that sure too. And I think he bunch. has some with his West Knits as well. So. And there it is. There you go. Okay. Now what Diana was saying. Yeah, this would be a great alternative we opened the box after right we made here. the kits, so we weren't going down, back down the rabbit hole, but yeah, exactly. this is fun. So this is a new yarn. They're going to be on the website. This would be uh, a great kit. Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yeah. Or you could put that, that, and that. That's pretty, too. Yeah. That's this pretty. is, oh, my God, this oh, is very cohesive. That's gorgeous. So this is a new yarn. It's called Spar uh, Sparkle Stardust. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, Got 410 yards. It's a fingering weight yarn, 80% super wash, uh, super fine merino, excuse me. 13, is that 15? 15% 15. 15 nep and 5% copper stellina. And Ready? the nep would be the tweed and the yes. stellina would be the sparkle. Look at that. You can't get this. Is this it's coming up. It's glistening. Mm. Definitely. Oh, look, it matches my nails. There you go. <laughs> so, baby rose. 
So Pam was saying these three colors would look gorgeous together. <laughs> and they would. They totally would. You'd have to buy it a la carte. Baby Rose, Frozen, and Fairy Godmother. Or look you could put in Oof. Void with this. Fairy Godmother. And that one. That's gorgeous, too. <laughs> What's that one? Barbie Pink. Barbie Pink. Barbie Pink. Very good. So that would only leave us to show you Dark Navy. Oh, that's pretty, too. Dark Navy, Fairy Godmother, and Frozen. Those three together. Yes. Lichen, <laughs> Oatmeal, and Gingerbread. How good is that? For a warmer vibe. Yep. So, listen. What's the yardage on this? Did we say four? Can you have too much sparkle? No. Let us know. And if you like tweed and sparkle, you can have both. <laughs> like so anyway, run. that's new in shop. So we wanted to show you that. And certainly you can do anything with it, right? Yes. It doesn't have to be. No. The Stephen West shawl. Let me just put them back over here. Thank you, Diana. I think we have one more kit. Yeah, one more top to share with you. Oh, we're excited. So... As you can see, we're gearing up for spring. We've yep. got lacy cardigan. We have texture tops. And then there's this beautiful t-shirt that just dropped. It's oh. called Sonia. Love it. Sonia shirt. Sonia shirt. S-O-N-Y-A. If you're looking for it in Ravelry, make sure it's Y-A, not mm -hmm. I-A. I-A. It's designed by Paula Strict. Uh, it's a cute t-shirt, knit and fingering weight yarn. Mm -hmm. we have some beautiful choices we felt that this could be deaf i mean you're seeing it here knit in a solid right but we thought one of um some of the very soft speckles from suburban stitcher would also look absolutely gorgeous mm. in an all-over knit mm -hmm. uh, and i should also say the beautiful colors by kokan oh Pam and I we're talking about, we're that. Talking about <laughs> that after we made the kits. Mm. The new Hydrangea collection, the soft pastels, would just be divine. It would be lovely in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to show you what we So did. as you could see, we're spreading our love, but it's endless. Yeah, those all these the Right. All these indie dyers do a beautiful job, and they all have their own little, um, their own niche. Yeah. And we're just trying to spread the love. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this here is a colorway called Cozy, uh, a great solid. But as you can see, it's perfect my, with the uh, layers. Vertices. This is in your vertices. You see all the layers in the color, which would give great, I think, a soft dimension to the top. Mm -hmm. uh, it just wouldn't look like a stamp color. Correct. Solid. So cozy. And this is Bobby Girl. Right here. Look at that great color. Yeah. Again. Uh, I'm not sure if you're seeing it, but there are layers in that pink as well. Definitely fun. Pair of dungarees, white jeans. Oh, yeah. Uh, this would be great for summer. Now, this. Classic. Cadet. Classic cadet. Uh, it's a great beautiful blue. blue. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're seeing it. See yes, you there. could see the mm -hmm. layers. It's yeah. gorgeous. It looks Very like pretty. it's like a kettle dye. So great with white jeans, faded denim. Come on. I like it. Classic. Or if you're a green person, oh, how about freshly cut? Love. That's beautiful. Beautiful shade of green. Love that one. We are into green this year, in case you haven't noticed. It's electric. has been on my list. <laughs> Look at all the shading in there. Mm -hmm. Again, another beautiful dye color from Suburban Stitcher. Or you could do gold. Look at that. It's a beautiful color. Love. Can't have enough of that colorway. This colorway is called Smoke. Soft pale gray, another neutral. Butter. Butter. It's like butter. <laughs> right? Beautiful. Very soft shade of yellow. But again, it's got shading, so it's not a flat color. Mm -hmm. Or you could go with a my, my top. Go for it. Granny Square. Ooh, so as we were top? saying. Was it the Willa? Yes, you did my the Willa. Willa. Look at the Granny Square. It's like a neutral, but look at those pops. Of color You'll, in now, each of these, when you see these strands, like you're seeing the colors, it really just 
nets out to knit up to one stitch. Mm -hmm. So you just get stitches of color. It's mm -hmm. not like dashes. It's not, yeah. Right. And if you it's want to know, all over go, on, go on my project page and look at the Willa. Yes, on Ravelry. If you look up Pam's projects, you'll see she test knit. I, that was a test knit, no? No. Oh, no? No. She knit the Willa, um, and it she used that colorway. Yeah. This one here is a colorway called Oyster, and Pam and I were commenting on how yes. amazing this colorway is. Diane really nailed she did the a colorway. Great job on that. Mm -hmm. She was spending a summer at the beach, and I think she was just inspired by her surroundings. Mm -hmm. The oysters. And came out with that colorway. It's a gorgeous one. This here is Nudie Patootie. Did I knit with this colorway? Yeah. Didn't you? No, well, you did sugar. Oh, sugar. You did sugar. That's why I'm so attracted. It's very similar, but it different. It is. It is. I'm obsessed with this colorway. <laughs> Nudie Patootie. Love it. It's like a soft beige with like a layer of a sheer pink, and then it's got these speckles running through it. This one is called Sea Smoke. More denim -y. Yeah, it would look great with a pair and of jeans. And a little bit gray, so yeah. now the oyster base has more of like a yellowy. You can see that gray if yep. I go in close. Background, this will have more of like a silvery gray. It's gorgeous. It's very pretty. I'm going to do that one. You sure. Do that one. This one here is called Sparkle for the People. Again, you're seeing some color. You might get one or two stitches per color, but nothing like dashes. Uh, base on this is more beige uh, or taupey base as That's opposed gorgeous. to the gray. That's and a new color from square. Diane, right? right? Yep. Stunning. Very pretty. Here, i do that. Love this colorway. This is fresh for spring. Mm. March hair. Love that colorway. Gorgeous colorway. It's got a soft, very soft pastel -y green base with like layers of pink and then you get those speckles running through it love it and this is shelter again a very lightly speckled colorway it's kind of a mauvey purple mauvey base with those great colors in there love that mm -hmm. and then we have scout again a layered shade of pink from Sir, um madeline tosh did we do this one I don't know if we did. If we did, we'll repeat ourselves. It's just a light, plain light gray smoke. Again, you can see the layers in there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. This reminds me. No, she's not wearing that color. She's wearing a beige. And that is Sonia shirt. I love that top. Basic. I think on the definitely a basic but there's a cute detail here and yeah. you're not seeing it in the front of the sweater but in the back of the sweater um, it looks like the shoulder line is further back thank you Pam and it just creates this great great line detail and Lovely. it looks like there's a tubular bind off there on the sleeve it as does. well it does yeah uh -huh. very pretty so we're, we're practicing excited about our tubular bind <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get real good at that there you go i think we're already good at it yes so anyway i think that's everything that we have right yeah there. yeah uh just a reminder we have the 52 not the excuse me strands of joy mm. uh by um the publication that was released by lina it was um the designer where is Hold it on. i'm gonna go get it oh, okay oh is it here? And Susan was kind enough to drop oh, off the gift. Oh, wait till you come back. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Just as we were getting ready to podcast, Susan came by with this. Um, yes. I'm just going to say something. We have two things that came in from Lina. It's Strands of Joy, the Anna Johanna book. Strands of Joy, Volume 2, which uh, is isn't lovely. Isn't this the one we did the kits last week? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, and then we also have issue, is it 20? In the line of magazine. So, this is cute. Both pieces are in. Yes, gorgeous. That's very, that's actually perfect for spring right now. Yeah, right. So, Strands of Joy is all color work, stranded knitting. Um, she had Strands of Joy one. And, oh, look, there are bobbles in there. Yeah, the little bobble. That's, that's initially right, right. what caught my attention when I was. Um, it's a fingering weight yarn, so that's nice for spring. Mm -hmm. It's fingering. You, you see, can you see the, the bobbles? Yeah, you can see them right there. How cute! Very pretty. No, no. And 
just issue 20. So these are the couple of things that have come in. Uh, in addition to new yarn, uh, things will be trickling in. I love the way they give the names of the designers, designers. on the outside. And here, this is the package. It says pink and honey. Oh, pink and honey is good. Diamond tip. Look, I like the way she did orange and pink. Well, let's see. What do you think? What's your guess? There's a I card in here. I have no Let idea. Let me read this card. <laughs> Dinah and Pam. Let's read the card. I don't know what pink and honey is. And this is so unnecessary. I'm that I should know. I should feel like I... Oh, look. Everything matches. Oh, no, that's she did a great oh, job. Oh, she's got a stationery. Oh. Thank you, Susan. Dear Dinah and Pam, I saw these and thought of you guys. Colors are perfect. Thanks for all your help. Always love, Susan. Didn't give you the pink one. I did. know. <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> okay. One is pink and one is orange. She's so um, right on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Project bags, of course. The shop Thank colors. Thank you, Susan, so much. Thank you. It's got this little pockets so in it, cute. too. Oh, my goodness. This will be perfect. A little accessory bag to go into my new. Into, that's perfect with that Dinah show. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, a so new much. Orange bag as well. This is awesome. Thank you, Susan. Who doesn't Love it. need another little bag? Very kind, thoughtful. I want to pink and, and honey. Maybe everything in the shop is pink and honey. Maybe unnecessary. That's what it is. I don't know. Never heard of the shop. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Very sweet. so sweet and so generous. Very sweet. I'm going to get rid of these yes. nice little things. I think that's it, Pam. I think we're done. I think that's a wrap, as they say. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Oh, and I'll last vertices class is tomorrow. It is oh, yes. tomorrow, isn't it? It is tomorrow. Okay. I will try to have this published. So if you are watching this, it's tonight. <laughs> it's tonight. <laughs> That's right. Forget that we're not oh live. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, um, so depending on when you watched it, it either already happened or it's going to happen. Right. Uh, I feel I have like to I say it was a very good something. troop group. That was a very good group. That um, I haven't caught up in the comments because I was disconnected this weekend. Mm, mm. I have to catch up. But Some very people commented on Stephen's stripe. stripe Stripometry? Stripometry? Is yeah. that what it is? I love that everyone is very engaged in that group. It's yeah. interesting because there's like ebbs and flows with the different groups. Right. Uh, so thank you for those of you who did sign up for Vertices Unite. Um, or who those who have signed up for the um, garden card. Yes, thing. we're excited to start that one. As you can see, oh, I should say that we're getting a delivery this week uh, from for some more stock in the felted tweed i think i've ordered maybe a couple of new colors but more importantly a lot of you have inquired about colors that sold out mm. so they should be coming back in and uh stay tuned to the web like stay in touch with the website because yeah, we will just out. re restock we may not go live with it because we've already done so but check the inventory and uh yeah that'll yeah. be updated all right. Sounds good. Sound of the bell. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye, guys. Thank you.